So my name is Dr. Sebastian Shaw, or Seb, uh, and I am a lecturer in medical education here at Brighton and Sussex Medical School, and I'm also the research lead for Autistic Doctors International. So this was a cross-sectional study, which takes a snapshot in time. And in this case, we used an online survey to explore the experiences of autistic doctors, in particular, the experiences of autistic doctors who were members of Autistic Doctors International. Uh, and Autistic Doctors International is, a, is what it says on the tin, really, uh, an international group for autistic doctors started by Dr. Mary Doherty, who is the driving force behind the group and this project. Um, uh, and the group centers around uh, research, education, advocacy and support for autistic doctors around the world. And this project really wanted to provide an evidence base to the experiences of, of autistic doctors as, as the key demographic of this group, uh, but also perhaps provide some evidence in the way of some of the challenges that they might face in workplace environments uh, around the world. Really interesting area in this study is that centered around participants' views on autism itself and autistic people. So most participants preferred to be called autistic doctors, and that was in preference to things like doctors with autism or doctors on the spectrum. So they preferred something called identity first language, including autism as part of our core identity. So an autistic person or an autistic doctor. And most considered autism to be a difference. And about half considered autism to be an identity and or a disability. And uh, perhaps not surprising for myself as an autistic doctor, but maybe surprising uh, more generally, is that only a tenth of participants uh, considered autism to be a disorder. And that's particularly important considering that we've all been trained and supposedly are supposed to be practicing within the medical model uh, where autism is still framed as a disorder. So in terms of why this study was needed and why it's important, we already know that autistic people face significant barriers to accessing healthcare, and that there's a lot of healthcare inequity and changes in life expectancy for autistic people. Therefore, it's important that we try to uh, promote uh, autistic people being members of the medical workforce. Uh, and that's why studies like this are so important. We need to be able to understand the experiences of autistic doctors, like myself and so many others, to be able to then try and provide better supports and help to ameliorate some of the challenges that, uh, that are experienced, particularly when we see some of the negative mental health associations found in this study. So in terms of next steps, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, positive practical changes that could happen as a result of the paper. Uh, and I would signpost people to, to, if you're interested, to, to read the paper and explore some of the possibilities there. From a research point of view, there's a few different things. So this was a big study. And this is only one part of the study that's included in this paper. So there's lots of work for us on our end uh, to, to get on top of analysing some of the data that are left there. For example, looking at differences by country or differences by specialty may provide some further insights, as well as analysing a lot of our qualitative data. And in terms of future studies, uh, I personally will be particularly interested in exploring whether masking, so hiding our autistic cells or acting in a way that uh, makes us appear not autistic, uh, I'd be interesting, interested in whether masking may in some way be associated with uh, the striking mental health findings here, uh, because if that is the case, that may open the avenue to increased education uh, and uh, hopefully uh, improved supports and mental health uh, down the line for autistic doctors. Uh, so to read more about our study, uh, please go to the BSMS website.